There used to be people in Palm Beach that used to live on Flagler. And then they did some racist ass shit to get all the black people out of there. Yeah. yeah back in the day, shit. I think they burned. They yeah, I think they had a, a, a circus come in on the island and then let everyone from Flagler Boulevard, all the mom and adults. I think it was no kids allowed um, or all the kids or something like that. And no, no adults. I'm not sure how it worked out. But while everyone was at this carnival, I think it was Ringley Brothers or some shit like that. They burnt down all their houses while they Damn. all went to this carnival. And that's how they drove the black people out of that neighborhood. I did not they know didn't have, that. They didn't have anywhere to go back to. Yeah, Florida's history, Flagler Boulevard, it has such a fucking terrible history. Uh, a lot of the shit that went down over there was fucking horrible. Next topic, ladies and gentlemen. Gentrification. Ginger, 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 gentrification. <laughs> That's what you get for giving those That's shit. That's Because I said it earlier perfectly, and now for talking shit, this is what happens to me, I guess. This is in, in Tony practice before this yeah. recording. <laughs> uh, gentrification that people from neighborhoods that uh, that they don't like. Like what? Like what's going around in your city? That you know this shit's coming in and it's kind of just ruining whatever it is or the uh, the flow or the uh, scenery. What? Uh, what is the topic? The topic I just said was it. I just what said it. Is it no? No. What, <laughs> what is it about? What is it about gentrification that the people from those communities don't like? That's what I said. Absolutely not. <laughs> Audience, let us know if that's what Tony said. Maybe I'm drunk. Maybe I'm drunk. But that's what I got. That's what I said. Um, but yeah, like I said, what is it? Why do the community don't like it? What what is Maybe it? What, like you didn't say. What is it that you they wanna, don't like? You wanna kick us off though? Yeah, there's several nuance there's a lot of little nuanced things. There's big things. There's small things. Like, Joey, give, give us a quick little uh, for the audience, just kind of like an overview of gentrification. Facts. Gentrification is when a predominantly black or brown neighborhood. It could be Asian because there's a lot of Chinatowns and the, those tend to be very poor areas. When people who are not of that color let, let, let's say more wealthy people um white people white people rich but rich is any color can be rich but in america it's mostly white people so when white people start to move into your neighborhood um you'll start to notice a higher amount of police percentage like a police presence because um they're calling the cops more um, and I think that's one major thing that people don't like about, you know, gentrifiers is they'll come into their neighborhood and say, oh, those guys are listening to music really loud. I'm going to call the cops on them um, and like stuff like that and like start turbulence in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm getting away from what gentrification is. Gentrification is when predominantly white people, rich, out of towners affluent. that are affluent. um, when they move into very low income neighborhoods um, to benefit from the low rent, but then they start demanding different things from that neighborhood, um, whether it be for the benefit or the detriment of the neighborhood. You can spot basically out of, out of towners move into a neighborhood and then the neighborhood starts to change. It used yeah. to be a lot of mom and pop spots and things like that. And now you're getting more Starbucks, Targets, all types of shit starts cropping up in the neighborhood that didn't used to be there. The rent starts going up because yep. wealthier people are moving in. And, and it, it creates a cycle of a lot of those people that originally lived there are slowly getting kicked out. Displaced. Not by, not, by, um, not necessarily from by malice, but it's just... Yeah. The, the increasing costs of, of living. But sometimes it's, by malice, I mean, especially in New York, right? Like you get these instances of like this, this uh, rent controlled apartment 
that a bunch of rich people start moving into this this neighborhood. And then this rent control department is like, oh, shit, we could make more money off these rich ass people that are moving into this neighborhood if we didn't have all these people that are locked in with rent control. So start doing renovations in the apartments that are real obnoxious. They'll start. They'll, yep. There's lots. There's lots of like malicious practices that these uh, these sometimes, property management people can have. Sometimes the building owner is trying to sell the building and they can't kick you out legally mm-hmm. because you've been there and it's down to the last apartment. And they are making your life horrible because you don't want to have to move out. This is where you've lived for 40 years, X, Y, and Z. There is some real horror stories, especially in New York. Even with me, I lived in an apartment. My roof was cracked. You guys visited that, that apartment. There was cracks going up and down my ceiling. Basically, water would seep in. My walls would sweat a lot. There'd be like sweat on my walls in the morning and at night. Um, so, like, obviously, there was water getting in somehow. Um, so, yep. like, you'll you'll see a lot of stuff like that. There, um, there's some there's some signs like Bucho said. Like, you start seeing more Starbucks popping up on your block. Your your, your neighborhood's probably being gentrified. <laughs> When Whole Foods Whole and Foods. Trader Joe's pop up, Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's is amaze, an amazing place. The fucked up thing is that Uptown could benefit from a place like Trader Joe's that has cheaper products and that a place that makes their own stuff and you could benefit from that trade off. But you don't see Trader Joe's anywhere near minority like areas. Um, there's you got something... all those bodegas. You got all the little Spanish bodegas that just... It's... Run it over, like. What do you there's want? There's something called the there's something called food deserts in uh, New York, mm-hmm. and in those food deserts are predominantly in black and brown areas. We don't even know about any of this bullshit until white people get into the area and the palette in the area starts to change. So you'll start to see more Thai restaurants. You'll start to see more sushi pop up. You'll start to see all these things that you've never heard about or tried will start to start popping up in your neighborhood. So like there are benefits from it. The displacement is really the biggest problem. It's 100. that we're we're slowly being pushed uptown until we get to the Bronx, and then the Bronx is being priced out. So where am I gonna go next? Yonkers? They're gonna push us all the way the fuck out. You're gonna be priced out of living in New York eventually. Is what's gonna happen? Yeah, it's it's, of- it's 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 definitely a mixed bag of things, right? Like there are some benefits to gentrification for sure, right? Like yeah. these food deserts tend to get broken up. You get a little bit more variety and things like that. Um, the problem is uh, what goes along with it is like D- Doe said is this displacement. There's also almost like this culture battle. Like people want to move to your area because of the culture, right? There's uh, th- th- this is happening in East Austin here in Austin. Um, there's some there's some really cool fucking areas on the east side that have been predominantly like brown and black neighborhoods, and they throw these badass festivals. And there's like this very like there's block parties and there's like this very community driven kind of culture. And then you get these people moving in because they're like, oh, this culture sounds cool. It sounds badass. But then they realize that like some aspects of that culture, these festivals will go till midnight. There's loud music. There's block parties. That's part of the reason you moved in here, right? Four Um, or five in the morning still outside. But but now it's a problem. They're like, "Mm, we we don't want that much culture. We just want we just wanted a little bit of that spice. They're Tony with his eggs. (laughs) Nah, you can't go wrong with that. A big uh, a big example is the block that Biggie used to live on is now gentrified. And if you are black or brown and you move in, I've had somebody tell me that they said, yo, my my neighbors would harass me and ask me if I lived in the building. And they'd ask me several times throughout throughout my tenure there he said throughout my lease there i've been asked several times by my my white tenants if i if i live in the building Damn. and he's like it's just um it's just what happens this is the block that biggie was on this is like what was once the hood you know what i mean um it just gets turned out and so my neighborhood it's happening it's happened. It happened about 10 years ago. So we're about 10, maybe 12 years into it on my neighborhood. And although 
the displacement has been happening. Um, I enjoy the bars that have popped up. There's a drinking culture in my neighborhood that's pretty incredible. Um, it is like the next stop in drinking. How Dykeman is a place to go drinking. How 181st Street, Washington Heights. When you say you're going to go drinking to a part of town. Now my block is like a part of town. And they're like, oh, let's go over there to drink. Because there's like five bars on the block. Six bars on the block. Places to eat. Burger spots. Thai places. All sorts of Indian food. Um, it's all within arm's reach now. And so it's like it created a buzz in my neighborhood that I really enjoy. But you get these out of towners, bro, that are absolutely out of the they don't get it. They don't get it at all. <laughs> they come in and you know what I mean? You're going to have to end up dealing with these people sometimes and how you deal with them is upon you. But um, it's a culture shock for them sometimes. Like we have guys that we have people on our on our block that they chill outside during the day. They bring their little speaker outside and they blast music and chill. They sell their little nutcrackers. They make a little money while they're chilling there on the block. And then you'll have people in the restaurant be like, can you go and tell them to turn that music down? And it's like, they're not a part of the restaurant. Nigga. They're the people that are chilling on the block. You know what I mean? And they're like, it's just so loud. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, you know what I mean? And it's just like, you'll have people that come in. And and at the end of the day, I kind of get it. Sometimes. Who, no, no, no. Who, who goes to New York expecting peace and quiet? It is literally yeah. called the fucking city that doesn't sleep. Facts. Right? That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. People are fucking so idiots. So You'll have another sense. This is another um, uptown and um, low income culture. We like ATVs. We like uh, B we BMX. We like all these ATVs and dirt bikes. And that's a big part of uptown culture and the culture of the poor. And you'll have a lot of out of towners come in here and be like, uh, what? Uh, I had recently, I had a woman that I met dirt bike she'd been on tv riding dirt bikes and i'm like cool so you you like the dirt bikes that ride around here bro she was like oh no that's terrible why would they do that and i was like look around i was like there's no dirt bike areas for them around here there's no there's nothing set up for these people to ride yeah. their ATVs and yeah. their dirt bikes safely. Yeah, it's, like, it's simple why they do that. It's because they think dirt bikes are fucking cool and there's nowhere else to ride them. <laughs> so I, I was, my mind got blown. I was like, so they really feel like it's for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Um, and she wasn't even white. So that was that to me blew my mind. I was like, wow, like the gatekeeping, the the that shit is real. Um, yeah, I don't my, think gentrification is a white people thing. I think in general, no. I think in general, that's what you experience because the way a, that money is spread out in this yeah, country. It's a, it, it's a wealth thing, right? Yes. Right. It's a wealth thing. Um you know, there's more rich white people than any other race. So when when you see rich people, there's going to be a high likelihood that they're white. But gentrification is not, you know, exclusive to white people. For sure. That's why so, we I like to call them out of towners. So here's a question. Just, Do you think nice. people are entitled to live where they've lived forever? They just get to live there forever? certain in in new york where rent is you primarily have renters where rent is more normal than actually owning your own apartment absolutely 100 percent. you shouldn't have to be priced out of your area because you're relying on this rent-based system that is set up because you can't afford to buy your apartment over here there are millions of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars for 500 square feet so like that's that is not 
you're probably never going to own anything if you live in the city of Manhattan. You're never going to own your apartment. You'll probably own a bike, a, a, a car. You're not going to own your apartment, though, um, with a, just a, a medium amount of income, 60000 You know what I mean? It's I mean, never going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a finite amount of property, right? Yeah. Um, and then these companies, there's property development companies that exist, right? And they just buy up a bunch of property. So, like, the expectation of having – I, I think that, like, people should expect to have a place to live. I think that that's, like, should be one of, like, the universal rights as a person is a, is shelter, right? Yep. Sure. So, and I'm not saying that – What I'm not, my question wasn't whether people should have a place to live. Is I'm saying, are they entitled to live there? I I think that it I think that it plays a factor though, right? Because like I watched the uh, I watched the John Oliver thing recently on rent, and like I knew I knew that rent increases and all that shit were like definitely a problem, right? I mean Austin, the uh, I read a thing the other day that the average rent price in Austin is like thirty two hundred dollars a month, like thirty two hundred dollars. It's a fucking lot. Um, granted that that's probably skewed because that's just rental as a whole, right? So that could include like some single home like single family homes that they're just renting a house and things like that. That's still pretty fucking high for that to be the average. So like things like rent control, I'm not opposed to, I think that there should be more laws protecting people's rights to not get fucked by their property management company or their, their landlord or whatever. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if you should just have like us, you should have that place staked. Like, I don't, I don't think that like, there should just be like a, immediate squatters of rights for everyone once you live in an apartment thing or anything but there should be definitely some more laws passed to like keep people safe and in, in their in their homes to answer Pucho's question i think no they shouldn't assume that just because they live there for up the amount of time i don't think it's automatically like a thing like oh well yeah nah i, I don't expect to move out or this and that like you're renting you're not an owner if you're an owner it's very different like renting your what if the person is really old doesn't matter if you're not if you're not an owner now if you have a contract with them and it's like a lifetime that's different i don't know how new york really runs like that but if you're not an owner you're not going nowhere bro or if you're if you're if you're not an owner you can you're you're subject to get kicked out or leave at any time if you're an owner you don't have to go nowhere you're a fucking owner they have to buy it from you you know what i mean so I don't think that you, they, they should automatically feel like they have fucking ownership to shit just because you've been renting for 20 years. Nah. Yeah, I mean, the rent control, I think it sounds good on paper, but I've read a lot of like negative impacts of rent control. The I don't know. It seems to stifle, like, it, it seems to stop growth in, in certain areas, like... Well, I mean, the problem is like our current system also stops growth, right? Because like all the condos, all the the apartments you see popping up, they're all these. The the only model now that people make is these luxury building bullshit. There's not like affordable housing that's being made because you don't make money with that. Why would you be a fucking property management company, a, pro, a development company, and not want to maximize your profit? Right? We're we're in a capitalist society. That's the entire point of having a business. So there's no there's not as much money in making these like affordable level apartments and condos and things like that. So you go with this high end bullshit, which just drives up rent in the entire fucking city and it for it causes displacement. That's it's part of like the whole like gentrification thing, right? I blame other people that want to live in single family homes. <laughs> Obviously it's not really a problem in New York City, but in pretty much every other city in America. There's vast swaths of land that's just being taken up by single family homes that are like, if you built a couple buildings, the everything will be more affordable and more people can live here. You know, there'll be more people to work, all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's um, one of those residual like parts of the American dream, right? Like it's that house with the big backyard and the white picket fence and all that shit. Yeah. Uh, and and especially you look at fucking Texas, man. Everyone in everyone in in texas everyone in a lot of people in my friend group their dream is retiring somewhere with like 50 acres of land it's a lot of fucking land for one person <laughs> not enough yeah. land for everybody <laughs> why do you want 50 acres though like what hunting shit are you trying to do couldn't tell you dude it is not my dream <laughs> like who Sounds, wants having that much land sounds scary what the fuck's over there 
<laughs> about, I feel I'm, like I haven't been over there yet. That I'm more unexplored. I'm more talking about maintenance on the grass. Like you gotta have to have a tractor to fucking cut that grass. Fifty acres, shit is ridiculous. Like who? I, I don't know. That shit is fucking st- whatever. I can't say it's stupid. I mean, somebody wants to do that. Somebody wants to do that. But yeah, about about moving out and stuff like that, though. Like, I don't know. So, like a part of me is like. Like it sucks, but I guess you gotta move somewhere else. Like, and and it, I, that sucks to say that, right? Like, there's people that have lived thirty, forty years in one place, and now you're saying, "Oh, you gotta leave New York City. You gotta move somewhere else." You know what I'm saying? And that that's shitty, but it's also like I don't know. It just kind of is what it is. Like, I I I, I couldn't imagine like. Imagine like the Hamptons. They're like, no, no, no. There's, we gotta have low income housing here, or, 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 or like, like some poor people have to live here no matter what, and they they'll be able to afford it or whatever. Like, is it, I don't know that 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 concept just feels strange to me. Like, I like, like you, you're, with, you're here. You you're putting a flag down, and you're gonna stay there for life. It just I'm feels, actually with. I'm actually with that. I think that would be awesome if they force some affordable housing in some of these like Beverly Hills. They're like. Mm-mm. Some amount of this has to be affordable housing. I think that'd be fucking red. <laughs> no, no, sorry. If they built new shit, I'm all for it. I think mm-hmm. that's fine. I'm saying like forcing parts of places to just be like you. You haven't heard the issue that's going on over there in the Hamptons. There's not enough poor people to work in the Hamptons, so nobody has enough staff. So it's <laughs> like, yeah. If you want society to function, you have to have some side of part of your society be poorer than the rest of them. And, yeah, you're going to have to give them some sort of housing. This I mean, is, that just sounds like a capitalism problem. Like, pay them more. Absolutely. Like, absolutely, just pay, those, but, pay the help more. Like, yeah. I find it funny that we're we're really saying that the only reason why we need the poor people in these communities is to work. Like, Dude, there's a it's reason a little, for a, everyone to be where they're at. We need we need people in the airports working those jobs. We need people in the buildings in New York working those jobs. Every, they, there has to be a functioning flow of, yes, you can make it to the top, but there has to be grease in every part of the gear. I'm looking it's, at it's, it's crazy to me, this, this concept that came up during COVID, right? This uh, discussion of, like, essential workers, right? And a lot of these essential workers... We're the, the people that are making the least amount of money. It's like, well, how yep. f- and like it's the the ones that everyone is like is like, oh, it's just a burger flipper. That's a low skill trade. It's like, how the fuck am I low skill if I'm essential at the same fucking yep. time? Like we keep we keep supermarket it workers, the people who are paid some of the lowest wages, like they're essential now. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just interesting that uh, the 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 hatred that gets tossed on to people that are just not being paid well enough. They're being taken advantage of by the system. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what the fuck we're we gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, we're just vote for politicians money, that are gonna yeah. put in good put in good policies and absolutely and make changes that that you care about. That's exactly what you should do. Don't hey, actually, number one. The number the fir- the most important thing you could do as an, as an American is to go and vote, both in the election that everybody seems to care about, the presidential election, but way more important is all the local shit, local your primaries, all that bullshit. There was a build a building development company that wanted to build a high rise in in Washington Heights or like Harlem, and they stopped them because they they didn't want. When you build in these neighborhoods in New York, you have to make a certain amount of apartments affordable for the people that live in the area. And they didn't want to do that. They pulled out. They were like, no, we don't want to do that. It's it's why it's why it's why every apartment in a in an apartment complex is not the same size as like the penthouse apartments, Tony. Like there there has to be a certain Uh, amount like I see what you're saying now. Okay. Like every if every apartment's like this three story penthouse apartment, you're not fitting as much people in this fucking building that's taking up an entire fucking block. You gotta have some of the low class come in and live. Well, not when I say low class, I mean like lower end pay scale people. Yes. Group come Mm -hmm. in, but but when you get unfortunately when you get the low scale or the lower class come in, you get the riff raff with it, and that's what the rich people don't want. They don't want the, I guess in their eyes like. 
The what? Like the you uh, said the riff raff. Riff raff. <laughs> I heard the riff raff wood. No, yeah, no way. Yeah, that yeah, that dude from Florida, Riff Raff, he'll go out there and he'll fuck up your apartment. I but think he's from Texas. Or is he from Texas? Yeah, no. I think he's from Texas. Uh, yeah, I am. he <laughs> seems like a Floridian through and through. But no, <laughs> yeah, like that, that's. I think that's their biggest concern because I'm reading here online about it, and they're saying that a lot of their complaints is that they don't want to be around. The ghetto, and by them saying the ghetto is like seeing the homeless people, seeing the trash around the streets, doing all this shit. They want it to where it's comfortable living for everyone, but they just without the ghetto is what I'm you know, saying on this thread here. But um, I mean, and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold you. Like, I want to live somewhere too where it's not fucking. I ain't gotta worry about shit either. But I, I guess you gotta pay for the quality of life. You know what I mean? I mean. I mean, there's like two different approaches to shit like this, right? Like there's the approach of uh, I don't want to see it. These people shouldn't be here. And there's the approach of I don't want to see this because I think that these people should be helped by society and they should be we should be helping them make their lives better. Right. It's like when you see homeless people, there's those are the two responses responses. I don't want to see this because, oh, my God, these homeless camps, blah, blah, blah. The, the response that I like more, the response that I try to put in myself is. I don't want to see this because these people shouldn't have to live on the fucking street. It's 115 degrees outside right now. This sucks. This must be fucking miserable. I'm hot in my car and I got AC going. This dude's got a fucking like a broken umbrella blocking the sun from him. Let's get this dude off the streets, man. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does suck. But some of these people choose that. Like they chose to like. Yeah. You know, it's we disagree. The, That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you know, you got drugs and shit that affects them, but it's like, bro, look at look at Delante West. The Delante? man went. F- I mean, Dante yes. West. Delante West, right? Or that's Dante? I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I thought I it was I Delante. Know, I don't know. I thought it was the L. He's, he's a retired NBA player. NBA player playing with LeBron James, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's he's Delante West, Tony. Yeah, uh, I see? didn't know if he was right or not. I'm questioning it. I can't yeah. question it now. Yes, no, you can't question it. <laughs> I can yeah. just There's accept all your lies. What the fuck? Man, Tony is such a victim. He can't question. <laughs> he fuck can't you, have a meal. Oh, fuck a, a succulent, succulent Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, look, look at He's how playing with LeBron James, girl, <laughs> and look at how mental illness or whatever you know, some people physically can't adhere to the capitalism state we live in mm-hmm. like it's just not going to work out for people that the five day a week work week 40 hours a week paying bills barely making it by is the one you know having one check ahead of yourself like that's not going to work for everybody yeah yeah it's 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 tough it's hard out there uh if you want a movie that kind of like brings like uh, like gentrification into focus, there's a movie called Vampires vs. the Bronx. Have y'all seen that one? No. Get the fuck out of here. This is a real thing. Yeah, it's all, it's on Netflix. It's cute. It's 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 funny. It's like it's like a like a horror movie with for like teens, basically like late teens. Um, but it's it's interesting because it's like the the theory the 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 concept is these vampires are coming into the Bronx, right? And it's like the the Bronx is trying to fight against them. But the movie is really about gentrification because they're like the vampires are part of this this land, this property development company that's buying up all these little shops and bodegas and things. And it's good. I would I would recommend watching it. That's awesome. You reminded me of another movie that we used to like when I was a kid, A Vampire in Brooklyn. Oh, no. With Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I Murphy's forgot he, he played as Terrible a fuck. movie. Yeah, I forgot he played as a vampire. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Murphy made a string of like bad movies. Yeah. yeah. It's got some classic ones though, man. Beverly Hills Cop. I watched that all day. Beverly Hills Cop, dude. That was my homie, dude. I wanted to be Foley so bad. That Axel Foley theme is so good. <laughs> that dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that shit was fire. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, yes, I don't like the fact that people, the idea of people getting forced out little by little, it's kind of whack. But at the, at the same time, get this money coming in helps that part of the town or the city. You know what I mean? It, it, it gives, like, they'll fix the city up more. You, you lose you lose part of the culture, though, right? Like, uh, yeah. 
like these cities make these lists for like number one place to live in America, right? And they always mention they're like, oh, it's the the talk the the taco scene and like the the music and whatever the fuck else, right? And a lot of this culture that is mentioned in these reasons you should move to these cities is the the, the brown people. It's the spice. It's the minorities <laughs> in the area that are bringing this to the city. The so then a bunch people. of you get a bunch of wealthy people moving in and the culture dies because you're pushing all these people out of the city. They can't afford to live in their fucking hometown anymore. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, I, think, I think I think it's a cycle. Like, I think. Um, people are just going to be getting moved around a lot. Like once once, uh, you know, there was a time all the poor people lived in Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? And now. Like obviously there's still poor people in Manhattan, but it's clearly the, probably the richest borough in, in the city. Like, yeah, um, there used to be people in Palm Beach. They used to live on Flagler, and then they did some racist ass shit to get all the black people out of there. Yeah, yeah back in the day, shit. I think they burned. They yeah, I think they had a, a a circus come in on the island and then let everyone from Flagler Boulevard, all the mom and adults. I think it was no kids allowed. Um, or all the kids or something like that and no no adults. I'm not sure how it worked out. But while everyone was at this carnival, I think it was Ringley Brothers or some shit like that, they burnt down all their houses while they Damn. all went to this carnival. And that's how they drove the black people out of that neighborhood. I did not they know didn't have, that. They didn't have anywhere to go back to. Yeah, Florida's history, Flagler Boulevard, it has such a fucking terrible history. Uh, a lot of the shit that went down over there was fucking horrible. Holy yeah. shit. This looks like it's a real story. Yeah, I'm looking. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit yeah. you guys. Yeah, Henry ah. M. Fla- Henry M. Flagler, the rail oil and real estate baron. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Tower to... Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. We're a fucked up history. Yeah. It's like Black Wall Street. They destroyed Tulsa, Oklahoma and all the people. I never yeah. learned about that until I watched The Watchmen on HBO. Yeah. It's that fucking really? nuts at that. It's it nuts like, that that was missing from my from my public education. Like 2015 when I learned about that shit. I was it was like super late in my life. I was like 25. 26 when I found out about Black Wall Street. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know this about Lake Worth. I'm looking at this shit. This shit is... It's pretty terrible. Yeah. yeah. But it is what it is. You know, every part of the of America has a different history. History? History. History. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, ladies, hit us with a little bit of history. Subscribe. We keep doing these too late. Why say X nay this one and then in five minutes we do this? <laughs> We're hitting these at the end. This one, I remember. X nay or X nay? X nay this one and then like in five minutes after what we does introduce that mean? the next I've topic, never heard this word in my X-nay, life. X nay, like take this one X-nay? out. X nay? X nay. I think it's like pig Latin. <laughs> Isn't it like yeah. a. Yeah, is yeah, it, it is. pig Latin? Yeah. So X nay yeah, this ix, one. X nay is Nix. <laughs> 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 so, so our, it's, a, so it's our, on the Oxford Dictionary. So, so <laughs> our, our, crazy. So our last section is just going to be all like telling people to subscribe. And shut <laughs> <up>. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs>